Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today's reading hopefully will be a bit of fun as an exploration into your special magic, your unique sort of set of spiritual energies, gifts, abilities and so forth and what that can bring into your life, what you can manifest, what you can achieve, how you can help yourself and others for your and their highest good, all of that kind of thing. So we're going to sort of start looking at a kind of map of some of the really high level energies, sort of mythical and sort of the fae and, and light and shadow, all of that kind of thing to get a sense almost of the blueprint of your energy. Then we'll use tarot to drill in for far more detail about your particular magic. And then we'll have a look at some of your gifts and finish up with some angel support, angel sort of messages and support for you. <clears throat> so hopefully that'll be fun. And you could be anywhere from someone who's just interested in spiritual things and sort of have a bit of an inkling that sometimes, you know, you know when somebody's going to ring you on the phone or you can kind of bring something into being by sort of thinking positively through to someone who might be very schooled in high magic or a particular spiritual tradition. So you can sit anywhere on the continuum. That's all fine. This is just meant to be, as I say, a bit of fun, but an exploration about what is special and unique for you. So I'm going to put down... The numbers for those who like to choose by numbers because sometimes that's part of the sort of spiritual and magical energy that people use many people in fact use numbers sacred geometry all of that kind of thing in terms of magic so you may be one of those people consciously or unconsciously if you choose by number but i've also chosen uh, some particular cards out of the magic of mediums oracle we'll actually use these and we'll, we'll revisit this oracle a little bit later in the reading as well too because it sort of looks to me like particular elements or ways of doing magic and your special magic. So you may be drawn to the, the concept of one of these or the imagery, something like that. That might be another way to choose. Of course, go to more than one reading if you feel drawn to more than one reading. There might be an amalgam across them. But for pile number one, we have attraction. So all the kind of anything through from twin flame divine union through to law of attraction type of energy for pile two we have mediumship for pile three we have glamour magic and for pile four we have journey so one of those may call to you it will be part of the reading but as i say we will actually revisit this deck for some more information later in the reading as well too so if you feel drawn to one or more of these go to those readings because i think that will be a sign that that is part of your unique fingerprint of magic so to speak so i do want to mention in terms of sort of magic and, and and unique gifts and so forth that i am offering private readings now so if you are interested in having a personal reading from me you can get it via my etsy store so the link is in the description box below it's also in the link section on my about page for this channel it's the only way that you can get readings from me. If anybody seems to be soliciting readings from you in my name, that's a scam artist, so don't give them the time of day. You come to me if you're interested. No pressure, no expectations. Anyone who comes to this channel needs or should be getting a personal reading from me, but if you would like one, that's how you get it. That's part of my magic and, and what hopefully I can offer to help people. So... When you know what reading or readings you want to go to, as always, I've got the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So this is, as I said, the higher level sort of energies that we're going to be talking about, and then we'll get into the tarot for more detail. It looks to me like the people who've come to part one have come to exactly the right reading at exactly the right time, because this map is really about understanding a next step in ability, a next step in sort of spiritual manifestation and achievement and all of those sort of things. You've come to the card that, as I said, signifies things like law of attraction, divine union, all of those sort of energies. So I think that many who, who've you know, either consciously or unconsciously been drawn here do have an ability to manifest, do have a sense of how that happens, are grounded enough in the, the real material world to make it happen, but also have that spiritual connection. What you perhaps don't know about yourself is how much you actually bring to the table with that. I think that many of you probably think that you've just sort of been learning about this sort of stuff in this life. You might have some sort of sense of it from past lives, but, but I think that you sort of like exploring spiritual things, you're thinking about that. But in actual fact, it's interesting. We've got some cards from the Avalon Oracle here and then also the Fae and we've got obviously a Merlin type character here and we'll look at what the meaning of that is there's sort of like 
information under each of these cards, but a Merlin-type character in the Wizard from the Fae, that suggests that there is a lot more heft to what you bring to this. Some of you may, in fact, be studying sort of high magic or something like that, or have a really strong sense and connection, say, to Celtic or Fae sort of energies around having a more ancient understanding. So some of you may know, but it's interesting because this is the light energy around you and this is the shadow and the light energy. Bath Cole is actually an angel of prophecy. So this is saying that there is a prophetic seer-like ability coming through for you. And it, Bath Cole comes when the spiritual realms are wanting to lift up you to an, the next level so to speak, and to have breakthroughs, maybe even to let go of anything that wasn't working. And with translucence over in the shadow energy, which talks about loving the darkness, this is about understanding, not loving darkness as in something evil, but in understanding the unknown and being prepared to go into the unknown. This card has a lot of synergy to things like the Fool and the Tarot, so being prepared to sort of move in both light and shadow to be able to get to that next level. So there's a new journey. There's something new that you're moving into, which fits also with the, the witch archetype here of the explorer, somebody who is going out to find the new and deal with the new, which ultimately can bring glory. But I do think there's a little bit of a warning when you get Achilles, because of course Achilles is famous for having a, a Achilles heel, literally a point at which there is some form of weakness. So now this could be partly that you don't fully see who you are and the weakness might be that you don't move into the next phase because you don't feel ready. So it may be a self-limiting weakness, but it could also be that there is something, some part of your learning or your spiritual abilities that needs more grounding or needs more information. It will depend. There certainly is the capacity for glory to bring in a higher order of ability, all of those sort of things for you. But you're about to sort of step into something that is a little less known to you. Maybe something you remember from past lives, but nevertheless, that memory has to be brought through. So I always think if Achilles there is there, it's understanding, maybe even with the law of attraction. One of the things I often think about the law of attraction is that we can all theoretically influenced by our thoughts and our sort of desires and, and, and so forth create our reality. But if you think about it, everybody in one form or another, consciously or unconsciously, is doing that at the same time. So one of the things we do have to understand is we don't exist in glorious isolation, that we do actually interact with others. And so possibly that's where the unknown comes. The other is the unknown. And it may even be for some of you, it's bringing in, say, a divine union where the next level is actually going to be challenging in the way those sort of unions can be. And that could be, in a sense, dealing with that could be your Achilles heel. It is good that in this deck, the Achilles card is about glory. So that suggests that you are on a stronger path than some of the other versions of Achilles might be in this deck. And that I think is because of this sort of... Con connection to wisdom and the, 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 the ages and so forth, and certainly prophecy. But I think there's just something, there's just a little warning in here. So it'll be interesting to see when we get to the part of the tarot, which is about what don't you see? Because I think that's like spirits sort of tilting towards what extra information or light can be shown on the unknown side of things. Now let's have a look at these. So we have what looks to me like a Merlin type figure and we also have what looks like a lighthouse. So I think the lighthouse fits with the exploration. There's that sense of you're going towards a new destination and with Merlin there is wisdom around it. Let's see what they actually say. So this says your life lessons will be repeated until they are learnt. Guidance is on the way. So there could be something. If you if you relate to the concept that in your spiritual development, your manifestation, there, there are some things that haven't worked and you almost say, what is my Achilles heel? And then guidance is coming to you to actually bring you through that. On the other hand, if you relate almost to a kind of Icarus type feeling that you get a certain way and then it seems to sort of not go further, like you get too close to the sun, again, life lessons and so forth. So there's something that is going to come through that I think helps you take, take Achilles from being vulnerable through to glory. And then with the lighthouse, we have... The path isn't always a straight line. You come back to things that you thought you understood and see deeper truths. Okay, so there's almost a circular feeling to this then. And I do think that many of you, 
you have actually done this in past lives. I, I think that most of you probably haven't fully looked into that side of things in this life, but there is an, an extra sort of level of learning that's coming, but it is a returning to something that you've known. And I think you will realise that you have more light in the darkness than you think you have and more capacity to explore. But there's a feeling of something repeating here, which has got something to do with whatever the Achilles heel is, I think. <coughs> so you're definitely ready to, to level up. Absolutely. You have you know, really good sort of manifestation, law of attraction type of energy around you. But I think there is something about understanding, I think, how that operates in the material world and where the impact of others and what we don't know comes in that is important for your unique magic. You, you have the potential to get that and work it out and bring back sort of energy and knowledge that you had before. So it's a journey of exploration, but it's an exploration of you and what's within you. Okay, so that's very interesting. So let's have a look with tarot. So we're going to start firstly with just a kind of overview of what spirit thinks is possible to manifest or bring into being with your spiritual magic. Then we're going to have a look at how the elements operate and what works best for you. And then we're going to look at what is unknown, which I think for you is a particularly key thing. So first of all, for Pile 1 Spirit... What are some of the key elements around, or the key energies around their magic at this point in time? It's interesting. That, I don't, I always say don't be too concerned when you see things reversed. I read reversals usually as suppressed energy or as stuff that isn't entirely conscious. So I do think, as I say, the people who are drawn here either are interested in things like the law of attraction and manifestation or are, you know, quite adept at it already. But I feel as though there is so much more that could come through and there's almost like a self correction self-critique issue that's having an impact on bringing this through your achilles heel might actually be that you have to know everything before you move forward with the queen of swords reverse there is that sense so it very much becomes a thing where you don't know your own strengths so i think this is part of it and it's probably why there's this sense of there's there's a pattern that you need to go back to to actually pick up that sort of energy so I think that's the first thing that Spirit wants to talk about here, that you self-limit on some level because there is actually a lot, of, a lot of ability that you have. And it's particularly around manifesting in the material. I feel like what it's saying, what the, the piece is that you're going to see and realise as you work out that you don't have to know everything, that you just go forward and do, is that you haven't fully connected the material to the spiritual it's almost like the two things are separated you have the ability to do it and it's a very important thing if you want to manifest but it's almost as though you see them as separate like that should just automatically happen and if it doesn't you castigate yourself it's sort of the classic thing which you can see in spiritual sort of groups and so forth where if you know magic doesn't work quote unquote or something doesn't manifest then it must be because you did something wrong or you didn't go enough into your shadow or whatever it is but this is actually saying that it's your own dialogue around that that's limiting you and if you can reconnect to to that deeper knowledge and wisdom which i think comes from other lives you can separate that but you may have to separate from other people who are telling you how to do something I think what this is saying is that you are far stronger with all of this than you give yourself credit for. And as such, you listen to the views of others and you self-critique. And all of this is, is blocking you from going to the next level. This is why Bath Cole is coming to you to, to essentially almost whisper in your ear about there is more to this. And yes, it does take a bit of a risk. And yes, it is trusting yourself rather than the teachings of others and so forth. But there's something where you aren't at this point really fully manifesting. You have such an ability to do that. It's also possible that if you're trying to manifest or bring in a divine union or if you are in one but it's not landing, because it could be at this point with both of those reverse not landing, it is confirming this is a connection like that because we've got both of the same suit. But there's probably a doubt operating on both sides. It's And and you blame yourself again. So there's there's something here about not not becoming your own Achilles heel, 
it, 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 it's almost as though you credit yourself with a lot of impact when something doesn't work, but you don't credit yourself with as much impact when it does. And spirit wants you to understand that you have that ability. You can connect these things. It's like understanding the material outcome of things in the 3D world. Why are we here? Why is that an issue for us? Okay, so let's have a look at how you use elemental sort of energy and and what's sort of working best for you. So this, I'm going to be reading the cards, particularly around the suits and where there's major arcana, the kind of energies that are externally uh, developed and with minor arcana, more what's internally developed. So Spirit, give us an idea about the balance because this might actually help in working out what bit is the Achilles heel so that you stop blaming yourself and you can work on it. So... What, what are the balance of elemental energies for pile one? It's definitely a thing here. These are all coming out reverse. And as I say, this is, that's not necessarily bad. And in this line, it really doesn't matter because I'm not really reading them as to whether they're reversed or upright. But... I really think it's bringing home the message. I mean, I've ripple shuffled this deck quite a bit, so it's it's interesting that they're coming out this way. So I think it really is just doubling down on this message that you've created your own Achilles heel by suppressing your belief in what you can do and crediting yourself, as I say, with the negative and not with the positive. So it's it, it's just recalibrating that. This is definitely saying manifestation, like in the material world is one of your things. You work very well with earth elements. So in grounding things. It, I would suspect that most people who come to Pile 1 you know, are good with their career, are good with money, all of those sorts of things, and have a very strong earth energy in their charts, uh, particularly as we've also got potential of the sort of divine union type energy there, both with sort of earth signs as well. So that doesn't have to be a sun sign, it could be something else in your chart, but I feel like you work very well with the material, better than you give yourself credit for, but you do do that. It's like it's like your magic ability actually shows up in things like your career and how you make money and things like that, but you're not necessarily connecting them. It's like it's like you you sort of see the spiritual thing is when you sort of sit down and you, you, know, you do a meditation or you do some sort of affirmations or something and, and you almost see them as separate. But in actual fact, if you really look at what you achieve on a material level, that will be telling you something about your ability. You also, it's very, very internal for you too. We're not, we're not seeing like any major arcana. So this tells me you're not pushing energy out. So you're not necessarily someone who influences others or, or pushes energy out or, or astral travels, does all those sort of things. It's much more the energy comes into you, which is probably also why we got Bath Cole, that sort of sense of information and energy coming to you. There's definitely a kind of a an air, clear sentience, clear cognizance type of, feeling here that's very strong with bath coal but it's also strong with having a swords card and very creative sort of energy as well too with the eight of wands and the nine of wands in fact that might scare you a little bit that might be one of the issues you may kind of clamp down on that because i think you're more comfortable in the material and and what you can see touch what there has evidence but i think that there's actually a lot of it could be clairvoyance anything that feels like color energy sort of creative energy, you download a lot of stuff, you know, whether you're aware of it or not. But I think it may come in a bit too fast and be a bit overwhelming sometimes for you. So so a lot of your spiritual practice may be about controlling those sort of energies in some way as opposed to directing them towards the material, which is, as I say, it's almost like it's, it's interesting because we've got the Nine of Swords separating these two. It's like your mind, the strength of your mind, again, and Spirit wants you to release this with the Nine of Swords being reversed, separates the creative energy from the material so it's it's saying that there's something in that there's something in being prepared not to worry too much and not to have all the answers but just to take in the energy and i think clairvoyance and and anything that sort of feels sort of colorful or creative that kind of energy channeling and how you manifest it getting your mind out of the way because for you that is an issue you you limit yourself too much with your mind I would be the last person normally to say just shut your mind off in spiritual stuff because I think you actually need all the elements. But I think this is saying that you you use your mind against you. You separate out the two things that connected together would actually bring about the wizard, so to speak. So let's ask what you don't see. Another reversal. Okay. 
And another. Oh my goodness. And another. Okay, all right. So this is very much a reading about people who are far more have far more ability than they think, but are a little bit scared of it, or or you know kind of separate it out and don't see the connections. Because I've never actually seen a reading that has all of these reverses. And I say I've shuffled these cards a lot. So this is there's a real suppression energy. That's your you could get to the glory part of Achilles, but you're you're not you're not allowing yourself to go into areas you don't understand and have all the information on. So spirit says that you're actually doing yourself an injustice with this reversal. And you may, in fact, you might have suffered some form of injustice and you think that that you know, was just spiritual karma or something or you deserved it or you have a tendency, maybe you've sort of grown up in an environment where you were kind of not fairly treated, but you somehow think that's part of the, the thing for you. You, know, you just have to deal with all these things. It's just your karma in some way. And what that's doing is it's limiting what you can invest materially, what you actually can build for yourself. The Knight of Wands wants to sort of get freed a bit. You suppress your own creative energy. So, so this is a bit of a tough love message for you. I mean, it isn't, it isn't. Like it really says you have such ability. And in fact, this mind, if you use it for yourself rather than to limit your creativity, and it is through your creativity in some way that the connection can be made. All this stuff over here where you are very, very, very good in terms of material outcome and it's interesting because it all fell in the coins area you are among the people who are into spiritual things one of the most likely to be able to manifest in fact in this world but for some reason you doubt yourself and and there's a lot of creative energy it's part of your strength really and part of what would bring things into balance but you, you keep them separate this is the issue so i think bath cole and the wizard and so forth and the explorer wants you to explore your creative side more because it will be channeled to you. That's where Bath Cole's trying to talk to you. That's where this information's coming from. And allow that to come in. Stop stop blocking it with your mind. Okay, so let's have a look at some other information and gifts. So we're going to start firstly with some astrology. So just get some other information around your particular magic, which is significant if you allow it to be, Pile 1. We'll have a look at the astrology around it. Then we're going to use some different decks to look at different gifts or ways that you could manifest some of this before we close out with some angel energy. So firstly, the astrology. Water. Waning gibbous. Calm after the storm. So there could very well have been something that you felt was a reversal or, or something that wasn't, um, wasn't fair that you've had to deal with, but you are coming out of that and you can recalibrate. North Node. Your spiritual practice is part of your life path. You may well have your North Node in the 8th house or the 12th house. You don't have to, but but I think that there is a very strong drawing towards this and, and even more potentially for your next life than this life. And Cardinal, which is about initiating things, and I think picks up some of this sort of like creative energy and so forth. So this is saying definitely that there's a, an emotional side to this. And what was also interesting, if you think about it, is that none of these cards that came out for tarot were cups so it may be saying that your mind is ruling over your heart i think and yet your spiritual connection comes much through much more through your heart so there's a creative energy so you keep your creativity and your material things sort of separate but your mind is ruling over everything and it's not leaving room for your heart so there's something in here about what you really care about it may also connect to you know, some form of divine union, <clears throat> if that res resonates for you. But I think you've gone through something, and I think it was very painful emotionally. This is why we've got the waning gibbous with it. You really protect your heart in this. You feel your heart is actually your Achilles heel. This is what you're not understanding. Your mind is your Achilles heel in this case, because it's too strong against your heart. So you need you need to to be a little less worried about going into the darkness and not knowing everything, a little less worried about being the explorer because there's something about what you love and care about and it heads you towards your life path and your spiritual development and being able to initiate something. So I'll just pull two more astrology cards for you. The sun. So yes, this is this spiritual development and spiritual ability is, is part of your life path, definitely. And Capricorn, and it's, it's earth-oriented on that level. So... You are definitely someone who is meant to be very successful in your career, very successful materially. If you aren't at this point, it's partly because of this blockage you're putting in yourself. But your life path is towards material success, manifestation, and so forth. Your north node may also be in Capricorn, potentially. 
that it does, again it doesn't have to be but i suspect capricorn is strong in your chart but it's it's what what is kind of missing as i say is the heart connection and the mind is ruling too too much so let's have a look at some different sort of spiritual pathways divination abilities things like that just a little bit more information that might kind of help you in, in things that you could explore to to break this nexus of the mind because you i don't i am not suggesting that you put your mind aside your mind is very strong but the issue is just getting it into balance so let's see firstly we have dreams incubation so I think Bath Cole might come to you in dreams, that sort of sense of prophecy. Pay attention to whether or not dreams are prophetic on some level because I think you do have that ability. And prophecy is really about understanding the patterns of the world, which also goes towards being able to manifest. So there's something there. Pay attention to that. Maybe look into things like you know training yourself to do lucid dreaming, that kind of thing. And crystal ball clarity. So I think... That's that gets you. To, I was just about to say, as I was sort of shuffling, that I feel like dreams, you know, shuts the mind off a bit and allows the heart to come through. And then, you know, when you wake up, the crystal ball, the clarity, of the mind can be in balance. And can, so as I say, I'm not saying shut your mind off. I'm just saying use it differently. Use it for clarity. Use it for getting the information you need when you're in the sort of unfamiliar waters. Let's look at a different deck. We have ascension path for warmth, ether, senses being realigned. Yeah, it's your senses, it's the elements, all of that needs to be realigned because you are, that, that's what it's saying. They're all kind of sitting in their little block boxes. That's what it looks like to me. All the kind of creative energy over here, all the manifestation energy over here, the mind controlling the creative input over here and water sort of off on its own. So there's something about realigning all that and, and putting as much value in all of that, I think, for you. And then we also have life path to the partner, ruling planet, the moon. Okay, so there is something for many of you here around a significant partner. This goes back to the king of coins and queen of coins. There's definitely some sort of energy around this about the right connection will help. And maybe that's how you get back to the heart. So don't close off options around relationship. If, if sort of something comes along and it feels like a synergy on that level, it is part of your life path as well. And we'll get couple of cards from the supernatural oracle and then we're going to get another card from the deck that started this just to see what else spirit wants to say in terms of abilities or focus for your special magic pile one crystal ball okay we got crystal ball twice so you're definitely a seer or something like that definitely prophecy can see the future very much likely to be clairvoyant this is all this energy coming through that that feels creative you you can see the future this is the point but you see the future because you understand the past that's what prophets do so this is this is something that you are being very much urged to look at to use to use your mind in that way to understand the patterns rather than to to kind of limit yourself i think and then we also have time travel finding the right timing okay so you may literally and like in dreams you may well be able to sort of lucid dream astral travel all those sort of things i didn't see a lot of energy going external but it is possible in a dream state that that could occur for you i think this is also though part of the clarity is getting the timing right and you because you are really able to connect to the earth if you connect that back to everything else i think the divine timing sort of falls into place Okay, and lastly, one more card from the original deck before we just close out with some angel support and angel number messages. Activation. Yeah. So this is bringing all the elements into, into being and activating them. I, I think at the moment you're separating them out too much. I do think sometimes it kind of naturally happens because you, there's something about whatever you're trying to manifest that, that isn't as protected for your heart or something so that you actually just do it and you go, oh, that worked that time. And then if it doesn't work at another time, you think, oh, well, that's my fault and you start to kind of overanalyze it. But this is activating the connection of all the elements and so forth and connecting with the heart, I think. All right, so we're just going to pull a couple of angel numbers and then finish off with a couple of angels to watch over you as you as you listen to Bath Cole, I think, and as you connect in with your inner wizard, which is significant, and you bring all these things in together. So angel numbers for pile one. 
finances. Yeah, you're going to make money out of this. If you haven't started, it's because you haven't got this all in connection. But I think you're already good with money and courage. Yeah, having the courage to sort of take it to the next level. So angel number 888 is saying financial improvements are up ahead. Your angels are asking you to work smarter with consistency, diligence, balance and rest. So and balance, hear that? The balance, I think, is the important message in there. But you're definitely meant to make money in this life. And then courage, angel number 555. Your angels are letting you know of upcoming lessons and obstacles. Trust that this transition is for the highest good. So this is the lessons coming through. I think... You, I think you're always going to be fine like financially, but I think that there's something, whether it's a divine union, they're always tricky and they always challenge us, I think, those sorts of relationships, or whether it is it is the challenge to sort of bring something creative through, you are able to do it. There are life lessons associated with this. It's meant to reactivate that energy and that magical ability that you have. Okay, so we'll just pull two angel cards just to see what angels might also be looking over you and in what areas of your life are one. Angel of Unity. I think that's I think that's on working on two levels. I think that many of you there is something like a divine union or something like that. And there, there is there is a real life path towards that. But I think for others it's internal unity, unity of all the elements and of all the parts of you and your and all the parts, the ingredients of your magic, so to speak. An angel of tranquility. Yeah, and like turning off that queen of swords, which you know gives you a hard time, basically being more tranquil, allowing things to happen, you know, knowing that you have, you will have the information, it will come to you from Bath Cole, you will get that sort of sense of uni unity in bringing yourself together. So, Paul One, you are very, very magical, actually, but I think that you're your own worst enemy about understanding it. And I think it's because you try too much to understand it rather than feel it. And getting that into connection and connecting your creativity with your your finances, your material things, all of that sort of stuff, bringing that into balance is all you really need because, you know, you were the wizard right from the start. You, you've, you've done this before, I think, and, you know, and you will do it further because this is meant to be with the North Node, your life path. So I hope that resonates for you. I hope it's helpful and you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So this is sort of like the high-level map of some of your kind of spiritual gifts, your magic and so forth. And you are very magical, but very much in the kind of mediumship, astral travel, otherworldly kind of way, because it's come up all over the place. You, you were drawn, obviously, to mediumship to come to this, to this reading. And if you have a a sense that you may be a medium i think you're right <laughs> i don't think there's any real doubt about that we've got other world here so that's the connection between the different realms so it's not just that you're a medium and can receive i think maybe sort of messages from those who have passed on and so forth but i think you move between the realms the liminal and the material very easily whether it's in meditation in sort of seances in dreams but it's very, very tangible. It's very much there. And you're able to go to the depths in, and into the shadow when necessary with Persephone. And that's part of your awakening. But there's an interesting thing, because this is this card here is meant to show some of the shadow. There's an interesting warning or, or issue for you to think about, I think, coming out in this reading already. And we'll see what comes out with the tarot as well. But I'll get to that in a minute. But certainly, mediumship, seer, being able to see the future, all of that kind of thing around connections to to other realms and other dimensions i think so getting that almost eagle eye view or owl eye view which we'll get to in a minute and you are very focused on the light and you're very focused on what is sacred because Dava, dava patra is about the holy grail and it's about receiving it's about the feminine this does suggest to me that most of the energy that comes to you or the energy around your particular magic is in receiving there's, you know, like different sort of psychics and spiritual people. Some are more projecting energy out, some are more receiving. We will see what the balance looks like with tarot. But this is very much about the divine feminine. This is very much about the receipt of information and finding the sort of sacred heart, the holy grail, that kind of thing. So there is a sense of a journey. You have a sense of a mission around this and you are prepared to, to march into hell if necessary, if it's for the cause of the light, so to speak, that's definitely there and you're comfortable in all of that. But the interesting thing here, and we'll have a look at the, the energy around the Avalon stuff in a minute, but the interesting thing here around the shadow is this is about making dreams real. It's about tangibility. The, the 
message of this is whether you get a little bit too off with the pixies, off into the other realms. There is actually a need here to ground this into the world. And the thing that really interests me as I put these cards out is that this card talks about using animal familiars and so forth to help connect and ground to the world if you're feeling a little bit floaty. And we have sort of that sense of that with the bird there. We then also have an owl here. We notice here with the seer there is a cat. So I think that for many of you there are sort of animal familiars or animal sort of connections. You may work with animals in some way or find the company of animals helps ground you back in the world. Their, their needs their patterns, the way that they interact in a very pure way with the world, you know, not in the way that we tend to complicate with our level of consciousness. There's something about that, about grounding you, and that's necessary because anybody who wanted to find the Holy Grail had to actually be able to see how that connected to the land. I mean, that was part of this sort of Arthurian legend, really. It was that it was the the, the lifeblood in a way of the land so there is something here about you have these abilities but you do need to ground them and as I say animal sort of familiars may help and we have the owl here we also have with the Avalon magic cards here we have what looks like going up into a mountain a journey but it's going up into the air I think this is the point but you've got the earth and the air it's balancing those two things for you that's the real challenge so let's see what the messages are for these so for this one, gently place your feet on the path you were meant to travel. Yeah, it's an on the path. Place your feet. Feel it grounded. There, there is a bit of a risk for people with this profile of, of getting into almost a realm of imaginal things rather than reality. It's like there's a lot of information that comes through, but like how do you work out what is real and is grounded and is true and what is what you imagine? Because there's a very high degree of imagination for you. And that's part of what allows you to move between the realms, but it can also be potentially the thing that has you go off in a direction and, and not, not see whether or not that's the right thing to do. Like eat the pomegranate in, in you know, the, the underworld and get, then get trapped in something. So, so there's a risk around that. It's important to have a path. It's important to know what you're seeking. It's important to ground it. See what the owl has to say. Don't be imprisoned by your past. Create a brand new you. Hold that vision. So for many of you, maybe the reason that you've gone into this realm and explored this is that there was something painful in your past. And again, it's a way of escaping it. For some of you, I'm getting it could be a bit dissociative. So for some, it may be because of trauma or, or something like that from your past and you became able to escape it in this way. And it did develop an ability that's very real. But it is important to be able to ground it as well too because otherwise that limits what you can do with it and it even limits the accuracy of things like the seer or the mediumship because you can get caught in your own drama rather than the the other energies that are around but you definitely have the abilities it definitely have the abilities it's how you ground it okay so let's use the tarot and have a look at what spirit has to say about how this is operating now then we're going to look at what elements you particularly work with and how and then we're going to look at what you don't see so firstly, how is this operating now, your, your special type of magic? Okay, for a start, it is definitely saying there's stuff from your past. So this is very much confirming it in one way or another, whether it's conscious or not. There's things from family patterns, there's things from dreams of what you wanted to do when you were young. And there's, it looks as though there were some emotional uh, limits, emotional sort of limits to what you wanted to do, what you wanted to achieve and so forth. You've got a very strong healing aspect, actually, both for yourself and for others. And definitely around the mediumship, like if you if you work with people around people who've passed on or whatever, there's a very healing energy that you can bring to things. Very, very clear. The energy actually and the messages you get there are very clear. It's really saying that's not really the area where there's an issue. You, when you're connecting on a mediumship level, you're, you're spot on and you, you probably already know this or you just kind of sense it. You kind of know, you know you're the sort of person who, you know, as a kid knew when grandma was going to die, that kind of energy. 
So that's very, very clear. But there's an emotional block or there's an emotional issue that you still haven't fully worked through. And I think it's just saying, again, that it, it's almost like the ability that you have to move between the realms was a way of dealing with that issue. <clears throat> and you will be able to do more and find your holy grass. It's really interesting. We've got the cups falling near the cup here. Find that more if you let go of the patterns from the past that are no longer serving you or where you felt you needed to escape into a dream world. It's interesting. And Six of Cups then goes to the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is the card of dreams, ideals, but also of illusion. And I think you're, you're, you've got an inner poet too, an inner very sort of beautiful sort of way of thinking and speaking and so forth. And I feel music around you. There's music around you as well. All of this is very beautiful. But you need to kind of break it out from some patterns from the past because this was a coping mechanism. Your ability was a coping mechanism, but it, it's now sort of something that you can develop to work for you and to work for others. And Spirit says you're, you're, you're already very well advanced with this. Okay, so let's have a look at what what is the balance of, of elements and how are they operating with your magic at the moment? Okay, so for a start, you, you do receive a lot. We did sort of see the receiving energy, but there is also the divine masculine image. So you're actually, it's really saying you're actually quite balanced on that level. It's not just that you receive, but the mediumship and so forth, that kind of thing is, and the otherworldly sort of thing moving between the realms is kind of in the divine feminine realm. But you're also meant to bring something out into the world. And this may be the seer, this may be making that connection so that, and this is why it's important not to sort of get caught in patterns of your your personal past, because when you're looking at seer or prophecy energy, it's probably on a bigger scale, and you need to sort out that energy if you're going to be able to do this. There's definitely a sense that you can can have an impact on the powers of the world and the direction of the world in some way. So you know, you may end up doing something like being a medium for or a seer for in some way you know people who are quite powerful or you may use it to be powerful yourself in some way it's very very creative though but it's individual you're not meant to to just go along with the pack with the three of wands reversed and in fact if you have done that and you've just followed what other people did you limit some of what you can actually materialize so it is interesting that it's saying that the, the we don't see there we don't we're not seeing swords beyond swords there so swords is working for for your mediumship but we're not saying we're not saying cups there so at the moment you're not using that emotional energy and and that may be part of what can bring it into balance but you have to release the emotional patterns to do it but you're definitely using creative energy and you're and and that in, and it could be in any form it doesn't have to be in classic creativity though i think some of you may be musical Yes, I just have a sense of the King of Wands and the King of Cups together being a bit like that, or the heart of a poet in some way. So there's something about that, but you do need to be individual, and you do need to think about what you want to do with it materially, because you do have the capacity to manifest, but you haven't really processed that yet. You're very much into the receipt and the otherworldly stuff. You do need to ground a bit, so that the Emperor and the Fool can go on their journey, so to speak. So let's ask what you haven't seen, what you aren't seeing at the moment. Oh, wow. Okay. So what you're not seeing at the moment is that you actually have, and you, I said earlier that you might read for powerful people. I suspect you will if you want to do this. Uh, there is a lot about power around you, and there's a lot about major change and transformation. It could be change and transformation in your own life and, and getting away from your own shadow and these issues. There might be a lot of energy coming through and it's necessary to do that right now and to free yourself from that kind of mental pain so on a personal level this is a real call to arms to say this is time to let go of that because if you don't let go of that you'll stay imprisoned by it and and constantly feel like you're sort of going round and round in circles with things being embattled in some way and and you'll want to keep dissociating 
Some of you may literally, as I say, have gone through trauma and there could be a need for things like therapy and so forth to deal with that. There's like something that's going to surface up and you need to think about it. I'm also getting for some of you around mediumship and moving between the realms that you just need to make sure you have protections around you. Don't necessarily think this means really dark energy is around you, but there is a capacity to get trapped in a pattern of of that isn't taking this forward in a way that's going to work for you and that continually makes you feel then that things aren't working out the way that you would want them to. But I think some of you, there, there is a real chance that you will use these gifts to, you know, it's got a kind of Nostradamus type of feeling to it. Or John D, you know, with you know Elizabeth I or something. There's, there's, there's something about power with you. But the, the amount that you could be involved in that, I don't think you see right now. Okay, so let's have a look at some things to support you. So we'll start with some astrology energy, then we're going to look at different sort of spiritual gifts, and then we're going to close out with sort of angel support for you. So firstly, astrology energy around Pile 2's special magic. Mercury, North Node, so it's definitely part of your life path. Sextile, something is going to be a bit easier than you expect. Sixth house is how you're in service to others. I think it's in service to powerful people. Seventh house may help you sort of then have the kind of relationships that you want. And cancer, you're very protective of your heart, very protective of your family, very protective of energy that might have come from sort of you know, upsets early in your life or whatever. And so you're protective around who you connect with. And that's probably good because I do think that most of you, there's going to be some sort of power energy. We will have a look at this in a second. But as I say, there's something about how you communicate things, which also makes me feel like this is about the, the seer, the, the messages you bring. And that's why it's important it's grounded and it isn't projected. Like one of the risks for someone like you, because you are highly psychic, but you also are dealing with your own stuff, is, is the confusion between what is your own stuff and what is coming through to you. So it's very important to be clear about that. Your life path is meant to bring clarity to others, often people who are quite powerful, who, who could put you in positions of power. So it's important to have that clarity. And it's import, important to be in service of others not just of self. You need to kind of work out your own relationship issues so it's not bleeding into it, so to speak. But it will be easier than you think, and the ability that you have is easier than you think. So let's just have a look at the planets that are in sextile. Mars, so this is ambition. Yeah, there's definitely power around you. Mars and Saturn, yeah, power big time. This also suggests to me that there's always been power issues around you. So there was something about power battles, power competitions, the, the imprint of at least one parent or something, possibly the father, but not necessarily. Could be just the most sort of like kind of aggressive of the, the two parents or whatever. There was there was too much ease in a way of that controlling you at one point, and that's part of what you're sort of like protecting yourself from. But there's something in it you can understand because in understanding that dynamic, I think it helps you with the more powerful realms that you could be working in. Okay, let's have a look at some different divination and spiritual gifts and pathways that could help further describe your your special magic, Palfu. I Ching, change. So you might be very good at reading the I Ching if you want to look into that, but I think I Ching to me is about change, and it is very much of all the different divination things. To me, the I Ching is the one that most resonates to things like power, military strategy, that kind of thing. So for many of you who've come here, there's something about that for you, change agents in some way, either using your sort of spiritual gifts overtly or maybe even covertly in a more conventional job. And phrenology, certainty. Okay, so phrenology is like the, the concept that the different bumps on our head tell us something about our personality. I think that you actually do have such a strong connection to other spirits, other energies or whatever. Things around personality, the energies that are coming through, that, that is going to be very clear for you. So I think it's how you understand people, how you read a room, how you know the energies around you that will give you the certainty to navigate whatever this power thing is that you're involved in. Let's have a look at some other spiritual gifts or energies. 
sacred stones, building relationships. Yeah, it is all about relationships for you. And and that is because, I mean, that's what a seer or a medium does, really. I, and it, then it just depends. I think the, the seer is doing it at this power level or the medium does it on a more personal level. And maybe you have the choice about how far you take this and so forth. But there's something about that. And also I think this is, again, saying ground it. You know, it's the stones, it's the earth, it's your one issue. You just have to ground this. You have to understand that you can be a little bit off with the pixies sometimes. And that's not that you're not getting good information. It's just you need to ground it to have the certainty that, that you know, will we'll make it useful for you and others. And we also have tarot cards. Wait for clarity. So yes, clarity is important. Certainty is important. You need to sort of see the evidence and understand what the different signs are and what are the different ways that you get this information. Tarot cards may be something very key for you. But you need that certainty, but it needs to be grounded. You can't just live in your head and go, I, I'm this massive psychic and I have all these things if it's not grounding because it's not helping you or anybody else. And if you dissociate in some level to deal with emotional pain, it's going to make it harder for you to know what is tangible. You do have the abilities. It's just grounding them. Okay, let's look at another couple of decks. So firstly, another one around different spiritual pathways. And then we're going to go back to use the Magic and Mediums Oracle for another card from there, as I said we'd do when I was in the introduction. So we have Ascension Path 4, Senses being realigned. I actually think that came up for another one. So that's interesting. There is something about realigning senses, and it's and it's realigning, I think, your emotions and your earth earthly grounded senses that's what you need to realign i think so that you can have this certainty and you can have the clarity that your abilities you know need you to have for them to really have an impact on the world and we have soul number numerical symbol for what your heart desires so there's something about numbers now we are going to use angel numbers near the end of this reading so pay attention to that but also pay attention to things like numerology and so forth there might be something in that for you and one more card from the Magic and Mediums before we look at the angel numbers and angel support for you to close out the reading. Meditation. Okay, so it makes sense you would get meditation because you, you do move between the realms. You are very much kind of moving between them. Meditation may also give you the kind of clarity and the grounding that you need. I definitely say focus on things like you know, your chakras and aligning those and grounding them and, and make sure in your meditation practice that there is a lot about grounding this. It isn't all just sitting in your crown chakra wanting to com commune with the divine. This is actually, you do need to ground it and bring it in, but I think meditation will help you. Okay, let's have a look at angel numbers for you since soul numbers are important and then we'll, as I say, close out with some angels watching over you, angelic energy watching over you. So your angel numbers are self-care, so yeah, there's something, I think all of you are healing from something and you need to think about that because it, it's the one thing that could take you off course and, and take you away from the clarity and gratitude. Okay, so angel number 722, you are being called to take time for yourself, tune into your body, your desires and feelings and probably through meditation, like recalibrate that, work out what's going on. You may have so much information coming through if you're doing a lot in the sort of medium and sort of like divinatory sort of side of things in your life for some reason that it, that you've kind of forgotten about yourself so do think about yourself and then gratitude angel number 8888 you are being reminded to show appreciation for the beauty and power in your talents and abilities so be grateful for them they they helped you when you needed them and i think most of you did need them to dissociate or disconnect from something at some point but they are also now meant to help you but also be in service of others it's not just about you and I'm not meaning to say that you're selfish. I'm just saying that there's something about a balance and service to others in this. So to close off, we're just going to get a couple of angel cards just for what other angel energy may be watching over you as you develop your special magic file two. Angel of Romance. Okay, for some of you, this could be drawing in a new love. And if the, what you've been dealing with was past love issues, then that's why it's important to to separate it otherwise it may well be that this is a bit like the holy grail an internal romance balancing the divine masculine and feminine and we have angel of the night sky i feel like that's drawing you towards things like astrology 
I think there will be information for you in the astro astrological sort of realm. It would be worth if you don't have your chart done, getting your chart done, because I think that it will give you more information about how to ground this energy. Look at where you have, you know, what houses your, your earth signs are in, what planets are in earth signs. Those sort of things will help you, I think, because there's something about the night sky. There's something about the precession of the planets that it's important to you. So, Polto, I hope that that resonates, and I hope you enjoyed the reading. You've got a hell of a lot of ability here, a hell of a lot of magical ability. It's just differentiating and knowing when it's when it's sort of true, as opposed to when it's sort of like a rerun of something that you kind of separated from before. That's that's the only thing, really. And if you, you take this advice and do it, I think you could do this for a career, you could do it in the halls of power in some way, or you could do it just to help people in your community, whatever you want to do with it. I hope that that resonates. I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So this has the Glamour Magic card that brought you to the reading and then a number of different decks to give us some other senses about the nature of your personal magic. And you guys are very interesting, I have to say. There's something quite mythical about you. And, and very much like the sort of the bearer of truth and the bearer of information and the cycles and the, the changing of the, the seasons and the rise and fall of power and clarity. A lot of this is about clarity, actually, in one form or another, decision making and so forth, and how one presents information. Because glamour magic, as a start, is a very interesting form of magic. It's about how we present ourselves and how we're seen. So you have a very keen idea about that sort of thing, how to present yourself, how to use the right words, the right fashion, and all that kind of thing. Glamour magic can also be where you can make yourself invisible when it's necessary, where you can almost be in the shadows and see what is going on so that you can have a clearer picture than maybe if it was obvious that you were in centre stage. So you can move in and out from being in centre stage to being behind the shadows and looking at what's going on and understanding what's going on and bringing that into balance to make decisions. Because over here with the shadowy sort of aspect that I'm using this particular deck for, we have Euonia, which is about bringing things into balance, but it's about choice and endings. And we've got Kronos for cycles. So part of what you do with your special magic is you understand the timing of things, divine timing, and the rise and fall of power and kingdoms, I feel like, on one level or another. And I suspect this is something you've done in a number of lives. With Volva here from the Fae, she is a very powerful spirit about the truth, even when it's necessary to be ruthless with the truth. And if we think about Kronos, the, the story of Kronos was that he was the original, I guess, king or ruler of heaven. But he got so paranoid because of a prophecy that he, his time would end and he would be overtaken by one of his children that he used to eat them. So his wife, Rhea, saved the child, which was eventually to grow up to be Zeus, by giving Kronos a rock wrapped up in swaddling clothes. So when he swallowed that, he didn't actually kill the child. So there's a sort of sense of power and the, the need for the, the shifting of a guard in power and almost a ruthless clever way of dealing with things to bring about and very clear decision making to bring that about and then we have spirit owl here which is about again knowledge and understanding and being able to see when things need to change and having that higher order of sort of perspective and so forth connection to the higher consciousness knowing what is necessary on a broader level so there's something about you which is in whatever level you work or operate, where you understand the dynamics of what's going on around the groups that you're in, the community you're in, the political milieu you're in, whatever it might be, and you can see the timing of things. You have a very, very strong sense of divine timing, but you also know how to present yourself to bring that information through. It's very, very mental. It's very information-oriented. I think you're probably claircognizant, clairsentient. Like there's, there's a knowing about you. And it's connected to some degree with a very, very strong spirit guide, I think, which has a feminine aspect. I get a very strong sense of that with this because I feel like Euonia here is like a, a feminine figure, the sort of like the feminine sort of like understanding of the cycles of life, endings and beginnings. We have from the Avalon Oracle, we have a strong woman figure here again. And then we have the companion card 
from the, the witch's compendium. So there's a sense of a connection. Many of you probably have very strong animal familiars, possibly of the bird variety. But I also think there's a very strong feminine guide around you because this feels like the Lady of the Lake with, with effectively Excalibur coming up. And Excalibur feels to me a bit like the Ace of Swords, new ideas, bringing in the new. So there's something about you. Some of you may, in fact, do this through something like fashion or creativity in some way. You bring in the new because you see you see what the trends are, what what is going to be appealing to the zeitgeist, all of that kind of thing. That could be the, the new that you bring in. But you also understand when the old needs to pass out and move on, even if there's some reluctance or if there's power issues associated with it. So you seem to be a harbinger of the new and of the cycles of life. And this could make you very, very sort of rich potentially if you want to use that knowledge and that sense of timing and, and a kind of ruthlessness, not in a bad way, because you're, you're actually recognising when this is necessary more than other people. But some people may see you as being a little bit more of the mind and less of the heart. They may feel like, oh, that's a bit brutal. But there's something about what you bring through. Let's have a look and see. As I say, I feel like this is like tilting towards a very strong feminine spirit guide. But we'll also see what these cards are saying because they have particular messages under them. So for the Excalibur card, we have be led by your own inner soul light. Healing and enlightenment are within. Yes, and they are. You, you are very clear. You have a lot of clarity. The issue for you may be that other people may find this almost too clear. So that might be your, and that, that's why you need to call on the glamour magic because sometimes you're going to do what you need to do very front and centre, but sometimes you're going to need to do it in a more subtle way a more Machiavellian way without necessarily it's not bad it's just understanding what's necessary and then with this card we have spend time reclaiming your balance your everything in balance there you will find peace so I do think that that you're in a in a because of your particular spiritual magic you are always in a state of flux to some degree you see the cycles you see things on a macro level and you so you need to keep rebalancing yourself because of that and as I say people will either not see you coming, which could potentially be what you need sometimes, or they'll see you but probably see you, as I say, as being very, at worst, ruthless and probably at best sort of like kind of clinical in a way. So, so it's just knowing how to have the balance and how to have the right people around you. Okay, so let's have a look and see what Tara wants to tell us about where your particular personal magic is operating right now. Okay, so firstly, right from the outset, we get the fool. So this is the new, this is bringing in the new. I think that you're at a point where you see something in your life, you know, it could be a relationship, it could be a, a job that you're in, it could be study that you're doing, it could be anything. Something has reached its end, it's time for the new, and you know it's time for the new. And it may require you to detach from things that didn't fully land materially, you know, that or, or that they've done what they needed to do, but that's not the next step. So for instance, if you were finishing a degree at university and you had the option to potentially do another level at that point it's actually probably better to go no now I'm going to take this out and do something new with it rather than rather than continuing to build on it you've got what you need to materially out of whatever this cycle is that's ending and something new is coming in something that's closer to your heart or that actually will bring some sort of relationship in on some level if it is a relationship and it's new, it's almost like you're breaking free from patterns of the past as well. It's understanding that maybe a type of relationship that you had before is not what you need to go forward with. And you do have the clarity to do that. But if you stick with anything that was the old patterns, you reduce some of your strength. And there is a lot of strength. You may also consciously hide some of that strength with the glamour. And that may be a good thing to do because there is a lot of power. You have a lot of power and I think you'll be around people who have power in one form or another. And so there's definitely a sense of, of protecting maybe your heart a bit, you know, by the glamour magic, but you also, you, you are about to stride out into the world and you are at a point where you're well developed, particularly creatively around whatever this new thing is, and you have an offering potentially to the world. So I think most of you will kind of know what is ending in your life and what it is that you are next wanting to bring in. And it looks to me as long as you don't give over too much energy to other people, that, that then saps your strength, then you will be able to sort of come out as the King of Wands. And the King of Wands feels more like Zeus, whereas Kronos feels more like King of Swords, for instance. Like so, 
So I feel that that, that is you moving into your almost inheritance of what your, your mastery is. So let's ask how the elements operate in your magic. Okay, so there is definitely an external focus and it's a pretty big potential external focus for you. This could be something you could do on the world stage if you choose because with Glamour Magic you may choose to do things behind the scenes but if that's the case you're around people I think on the world stage in one form or another either now or that's where you're developing to. And you can definitely close out energies when they're necessary. So you have this sort of sense of the, the procession of time, the procession of development and ideas and so forth. So that's definitely there. There is some external focus, and as I say, it's a big focus potentially for you. You primarily operate well with the grounded earth energy. So, And you can build money, you can build sort of businesses, you can build careers, all of those sort of things. That's all very, very simple for you because you do know. You do see the patterns, you do see the trends, you do know what's going to be a growth opportunity, all of those sorts of things. And you're prepared to, to walk away and separate when you can see it's time to do that. You can also connect creatively with others. So I think you'll always be more of a leader. But you know, for some of you, it may be quite subtle. I do get that for some of you, you may be working with someone who's very powerful and you're really literally, as they say, the power behind the throne, particularly creatively and in terms of clarity. But you know you know when to, to moderate you know, what the world sees, if that works well for you and so forth. But certainly... The one thing that isn't showing up in terms of elements is that your heart. So the heart is here. So there are potential offerings around heart and relationships. But it is interesting because this card is not necessarily celibate, but it tends to be I'm only going to be in a relationship if it's actually one that's worth it to me. So there is a, a tendency with you to focus your spiritual and and magical gifts on like material outcomes and sort of like the cycles of life, keeping things flowing and moving. You're not, you're not necessarily focusing your thing on the heart. That might actually be good in a way, I have to say, because I do feel your potential magic here is in, as I say, the cycles of beginnings and endings. And that may be a bit harsh in relationships. So I think it could be quite wise that you let relationships develop. And if they're worth it to you, then you have the relationship. But it's not, you're not sort of someone who'd sit there and try and manifest a a relationship I think you have an understanding that things come in their time and, and it's better to let that emerge while you focus more on sort of the material and potentially say the creative let's ask what you don't see at the moment okay so this is picking up the fact that we didn't have the cups so to some degree, you're not seeing in the frame of what you're planning here and doing. You're not seeing your happiness, so to speak. It's more like you've got the sort of the, the, the concept of time and, and cycles and change. It's almost like you've detached a bit from your heart. So Spirit is saying there is the capacity for love to be in your life and for it to be something that's worth it to you. But there may be a very strong focus on the material at the moment. You may not be focusing on that or you may be always thinking, Will it move through the cycles or do I get it stuck in some way? Because you like change and so forth. And as a result, you're maybe suppressing some of your passion, even some of your creative ability and, and so forth to some degree as a result of that. You, you're much more step by step and I want to conserve it if it's emotional energy. I think it's saying you're very, very comfortable with change and, and seeing things clearly for what they are in the realms of the material, creative, political, whatever it might be. But on an emotional level, you're more conservative and you want to know it's going to last and so forth. So I think there's just an understanding of, of when this character here will say, yes, this relationship is right. I don't think it's saying you can't have a relationship. I just think it's saying that maybe you need to, to open yourself to that and not be as much of a sort of like watching it and, and presenting yourself. Because it's also important that this card to some degree means that you choose how you present yourself to people, which I think in most of what you do with your magic, you're going to need to do. But I think emotionally it needs to be sort of more authentic. You need to kind of limit some of that kind of issue around creating yourself and the glamour of it and be more in the heart. So I think Spirit's just sort of saying, don't forget that. 
Okay, so let's have a look at some astrology energy around your, your personal magic. And then we're going to look at different sorts of decks that talk about spiritual gifts and approaches before we close out with some angel support for you. So firstly, astrology around your, your personal magic. Fifth house. So look, there is something about creativity, but also about romance. So it's saying don't forget that, I think. It's all spirit saying. Eighth house. Yeah, you're very... You're very into the sort of mysterious and the scorpionic and the depths and so forth. Tenth house, and you're going to make money with it, or it's going to be around power, position, being seen in the world and so forth. And ninth house, there's higher learning and sort of like you've learnt things around this. You understand the, the realm that you're in, you know, and I think that could be both material as well as sort of psychic. Sextile, something's going to be a bit easier than you expect. And Virgo, very much connected to, to grounding everything. This is why the, the, the pentacles energy is so important. You do ground things. You do understand the material impact of things. Let's have a look at what the sex style is. Uranus, so it's about change. Yeah, cycles, change. And Mars, yeah. You can definitely take things through change. You are, you are very strong in that you you are it doesn't it doesn't phase you in the way that it phases other people because you can sort of see it on a higher level perspective i think and you understand it and you are prepared to have the strength to do that so you're a natural change agent and a natural sort of dealing with power and change around power as well and it's interesting because that there's a very strong divine feminine sort of feeling around much of this but this is also saying that you have the kind of connection to the divine masculine as well Let's have a look at some different gifts or approaches that could help you with your personal magic, Pile 3. Fire, spontaneity. So this is the creativity. And fire is the thing, it does two things. It burns out the old and it brings in the new, it warms the new. So I think there's something about fire energy. Fire in your astrology chart would be interesting, particularly if you had a fire sign in either the 10th, 8th, Fifth or ninth, I work. You almost be almost guaranteed to have it in one of them, I would think. But it would be interesting to see where you have fire signs in your chart if you know your chart, because it might tell you where creative energy particularly can be manifest. An arrow focus, and that's a bit like the the sword right at the beginning. You're very focused. You're very fearless, very fearless. Do understand that some people will see that as blunt or brutal or harsh. But I think you do know that. That's why we've got Glamour Magic. You know when you need to kind of be a little bit softer. Okay, let's see some other spiritual gifts or approaches. Angel, you are safe and protected. So, yes, you do. And I do think, I think you've got a very, very strong feminine energy guide, definitely. And it may be angelic, potentially, but certainly there's, there's a very strong guide around you because you are going to be mixing, I think, in some fairly significant change energies at the very least. And we have astrology. Yes, astrology. I do think knowing your chart could be helpful if you have access to that sort of information. You may, in fact, also be an astrologer. This might be part of this energy of seeing the cycles of things because if anybody in the spiritual realms sees the cycles of things, it's astrologers. So you may, in fact, be an astrologer or, or it might be worth studying it potentially. Okay. And another couple of cards from another sort of spiritual gifts deck. Star attunements. Okay, so you may have star seed connections or again the astrology. I do think astrology is very strong for you. And stars, it's all about, you know, where they move in the heavens and cycles again. There's a pattern showing up here for you. And we have Life Path 5, the free spirit ruling planet Mercury. Yeah, and you would be a free spirit because you, if you understand the patterns of life and you understand that endings and beginnings are necessary, there's a kind of a freedom to that. You're not trying to hold on to things. It's also an issue, I think, around relationship for you. You've got to really find that authentic relationship because there's a part of you that's very free and would only connect for that reason. Okay, so I'm going to get one more card of this type which is another card from the original deck. As I said, I would draw in the introduction. And then we're going to close out with some angelic energy. So we have mysticism. Okay. So this, I think, goes to the ninth house and so forth, and to some degree to astrology as well too. So 
This is a connection to the higher orders. It's why you potentially will do this on a big scale. And it is a connection to understanding almost the psychology of what happens behind things because you have a very finely tuned idea about, about psychology. The thing about mysticism, and particularly, say, as it's, as it's shown here with the, the Kabbalah, is the Kabbalah is actually what they have Sephiroth, which are kind of divine emanations, and they're kind of almost like different personality aspects of the divine as it comes into the material and then as it returns after life as well. So there is this sense here of understanding the psychology of things. And astrology does the same thing. And there's astrological connections to all the Kabbalah. So I do think that if you haven't already studied things like the Kabbalah or other mystical paths and or astrology, you can really, I mean, your natural ability, your natural magic is there already, but you, you'll give it a grounding that, that you know, makes it grow even more. Okay, so let's finish off with some angel numbers and then angel energies for you. So we've got protection again. You're definitely protected. If you're worried, I do think many of you are going to be in very powerful sort of environments and a lot of change and a lot of potential debate around things, but you are protected because you're, you're doing what you're meant to be doing. And courage. So you need the, the courage, obviously, to do that. So angel number 40 for protection. Your angels are letting you know that you are safe and protected. Feel the warmth surrounding you. And they've got it with the fire. So maybe you literally feel angelic energy as warmth. And then courage, angel number 555. Your angels are letting you know of upcoming lessons and obstacles. Trust that this transition is for your highest good. So you're, you're going to do it. I actually think that if you, you have the courage already, I actually think if you start using that energy around learning some things, new things that, that can help you understand the cycles of things, that will, that will kind of make sure the lessons work for you. You're working with that energy really well if that's the case. So to finish off, we'll just pull out another couple of angel cards just to see any other angelic energy in the areas in life that it, it is manifesting for your personal magic at the moment, pile three. Angel of families. Okay, so there may be almost like this could be a genetic sort of gift that you have or there could be changes around your families and so forth that is part of this and you understand that and, and can help families go through that. It could also be, I think, dynastic sort of families, that kind of sense of dealing with power as well. And we have Angel of Remembrance. So part of what you do, I think, and there might be some mediumship involved in this as well too, is, is helping people go through the cycles, but also being able to remember and take what was good from something, not sort of like be caught in a grief cycle and so forth. So there's something there as well too. And remembering and also understanding the cycles of things you need to remember you need to see when patterns are similar and what were the signs when you know particular points of change are coming up so i hope that that resonates for you pile three i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear about it otherwise i hope to see you in future readings Welcome pile four to your reading. So this is the journey card that brought you to the reading and these are some other cards from other oracles I think help give us a bit of a sense of almost at a mythic level your special magic. And there's a kind of a dual message in this because it is definitely talking about what your spiritual magic is and there's a couple of levels to it that I think it's showing clearly but it's also I think showing a point that you're at at the moment. And why I say that is that this card to me always like speaks of shamanic sort of journeys, healing and so forth. And the Fey card here is also about, about nurturing and healing and very specifically about a need to do it for yourself. So there's a kind of a journey within to heal something within. And this deck I was using is almost the shadow aspect, not in a bad way, but in the sort of like the less clear aspect of what is going on with your spiritual gifts. And we have a render, which is a card about things ending so that new cycles can come in. It's a very feminine card. It's about wisdom coming in and understanding coming in, but something is ending. So this feels as though it is saying that the people who've come here, if you come to the right reading, you have a natural shamanic ability to go into the depths, to heal, to heal yourself, to heal others. That is one of your spiritual gifts. It's one of your special magic, but there's actually a need to be using it for yourself at the moment. And there's a capacity certainly with the veil walker to, to move between the, the dimensions and so forth to do the healing. But there is a need to do that because something new 
is coming through a real kind of sense of enlightenment, a real kind of sense of something wonderful and new that you can help to birth. And this can also be talking about birth as well. So for some of you, it might be one of your special magic will be your children that you have and so forth as we you know, like a dynasty that you, you have in kind of magical or spiritual ways. But it, it equally is maybe birthing your own enlightenment, birthing something that you're bringing creatively into the world. Because Eos is a daughter of Titans and her brother was the sun. And we have the sun here in the white light oracle. So that's sort of like the light side as opposed to the shadow side. And this is all about coming in touch with your own inner knowing, your personal enlightenment and becoming free and clear and understanding you are part of the light. So it almost looks to me like some of the people who've come here, you've almost dwelled in the... the the sort of underworld sort of energy and shamanic energy and all of that kind of thing around your personal magic and maybe either felt a bit lost or have lost something as a result but it's like there's a bringing back of the light and it's interesting because when I saw these two cards from the the Avalon Oracle I have a sense here of of you know kind of the energy of nature which connects to the sort of shamanic nurturing side and then with the king here I, I heard once in future king you know that the, the that's a book title for the story, obviously, about Arthur. But but this feels like that. It feels like the return of the king in some way. So whether that is personally you or whether it's a child you have or whether it is something like within you, your own kingdom, your own sovereignty, there is something about new light energy coming through that you are part of. And it's because you have been able to go in and heal yourself and potentially heal others but it's it's you're not just a healer there's something else you're there's something about birthing the new and the return of i don't know honor <laughs> you know the, the the once and future king as i say there's some sort of energy like that's really very interesting and and you are somehow party to bringing that in so that's really interesting Let's see with Tara what Spirit wants to say about where you're at at the moment with your personal magic. My goodness. Yeah, once and future king. There's something. There's something very Arthurian, very mythical about this, but there's there's also something about power. And as I say, it could be your own personal sovereignty. It depends on how this how this you know works for you. It could be moving into leadership positions in a workplace or something like that, where your personal power and magic to heal an organization and bring through the new and bring through light and the next regeneration could be part of it. You've certainly gone through something where there's been a sacrifice, definitely. If you've come to the right reading. You, you'll kind of know what this is. It could be personal, it could be work-wise, it could have been spiritual. There's some sort of sacrifice or, or a feeling of drama and, and that it's delayed some of you know this progress towards the return of the king, as I keep saying. Highly idealistic, and that kind of connects with that as well too. But also I think that you some of the things that have made things dramatic is realising that some of the sort of emotional energy that you've had, some of the dreams that you might have had, some of them weren't as realistic as others. This is why you needed to go in within and, and heal some of that because you might have had sort of some ambitions that weren't the right ambitions for you and all it brought you was drama and trouble and so forth and delays. You are meant to to bring in something very new, as I say, and I feel very good, particularly around power or authority or sovereignty in some way. And that you know depends on your life how that plays out. But but this is just saying that you've kind of got stuck in 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 the delay around something, but you're starting to get a sense now. You're starting to heal, you're starting to let some of that go and get the wisdom coming through that will help you move to this as i say sovereignty in your own life or being around people with power or something like that so let's ask how you're using the elements in your magic okay so you're highly empathic. A lot of your a lot of your sort of like healing energy is emotional. And and it was, you know, there's many ideals, but as I say, maybe one of them took you down a bit of a blind alley or something like that. But you work very, very strongly with emotions and moving people from 
from a feeling of being emotionally bereft into into a happier state of being. So there's something, as I say, it could be a therapist, you could be sort of someone who works in the healing arts, you could be someone who does this in an organisation, you could be something, someone who is the agony, agony art for all your friends and they really rely on you for that. You're very emotionally attuned and you're very psychic, like there, there's a lot of internal and external information operating here. And that kind of fits with this first thing because... The, the healing journey feels very internal, but the sun energy feels very external. So you're a balance of both receiving and projecting magical energy. It's just done in different ways. The receiving, the em empathy and so forth is the healing part. But I feel like the high priestess is more like a seer that sees the sort of like changes in, in the political power or whatever it might be. You certainly have a very keen eye for injustice and where people have sacrificed when they shouldn't have sacrificed. So... There's something about power, there's something about the law, there's something about bringing things into balance that is part of what you do and it's how you use your mind. So your mind is focused on what needs to be healed, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be brought back into balance. The least, the least sort of focus for you probably, well in fact the least absolutely is the creative. You're not necessarily thinking of creating per se, even though there's a creative energy in these. It's like you're not necessarily manifesting it in a way that you know you want to write a book or paint a picture because we don't see one's energy there at all but we do and and we only see one material thing the king of coins it is well advanced because it's a king so you're you're very materially savvy but it's not where you're focusing your spiritual light you're focusing your spiritual light on healing emotions and then being able to predict the coming of the sun i keep getting like there's, there's something very interesting i think you're, many of the people who come here are going to be around some very interesting people and or develop yourself into a very interesting person on yeah some level of sort of overt scene stage in some way so let's ask what you're not seeing One of the things you don't see is that you actually feel really guilty about the concept of making money or, or you know, having a business or doing something in the spiritual realm. You sort of feel like you shouldn't do that to make money. Like You really carry a bit of guilt around you know, material outcomes. It's probably why the king of coins is there. You could do it, but you feel like you shouldn't do it. You should be healing people and you should be bringing the sunshine. But you, you, you kind of suppress your own capacity to make some money out of it, do it as a business. But if you did, you'd do it really well. And in doing it, you'd be in more of a position to, to bring in the sun and to stop the injustice. So I think you have a little bit of a guilty conscience that you don't need to have about spiritual matters. Maybe because, you know, the shamanic sort of journey that you go on often feels sort of really dark and so forth. And you feel like you should be spreading love and light, um, that you're not really sure how to balance that off. But spirit is saying, don't, don't put sort of such a value value thing against that saying that it's somehow not spiritual to think about the material in fact for you in particular because there's something you're meant to help to to bring into the world in one way or another it's what you're meant to do and like looking at that is is and understanding that and accepting that it's something it's gifts that can help you materially because that also puts you in more of a position to help in other ways other people is fine it's not something to feel guilty about you may have had that sort of put into you from childhood that spiritual matters are not material you know that, that you know we get our reward in heaven or whatever but this is actually saying well no you can have a reward on earth there's nothing wrong with that okay so let's have a look at some astrology energy around you venus so what you love is important conjunction we'll have a look at what the planets are for that 10th house yeah you're meant to you're meant to bring this loving nature and caring nature into the 10th house. Into this, You're not looking at that at the moment, but you're meant to because you are you would rise very far and you are meant to be around other people who are very successful. And yes, first house, you're meant to be seen. It's not just a sort of, you know, there's something about, you know, who you are in the world that is supposed to make you some money. North Node, your spiritual practice is part of your life path. 
and south node so there are things both to to bring in and things to let go so whatever this pain was it's time to let that go i'd say and if there's guilt around material things it's time to let that go the north node is saying you know that you are meant to to do something in the world and sort of bring in sort of love and light and so forth let's see what the conjunction energy is so i'm just going to deal out till i get oh, i've got satin I get the planets Saturn and Mars okay so this is this is picking up some of the healing like on a very very direct level because Saturn Saturn and Mars together can be a bit of a challenge around health and around sort of like particularly around things like inflammation muscle pain that kind of thing so you may be sort of someone when you're going through that sort of healing thing that, that finds that that Saturn and Mars kind of can be tricky for you but I think this is also about the kind of the the shifting of the guard in terms of of sort of power so I think there's sort of something about bringing in yeah bringing the sun back in bringing the sun king back in or being that depending upon who has come to this reading but you can, you know, it, when it's working well, on Saturn conjunct Mars, if if they're in balance, so if Saturn was over over sort of emphasised with that, it would actually limit and slow down what you're trying to do. So that that's slowing down at the moment because you that we had with the hangman and so forth because of something dramatic. That's when Saturn has taken over Mars. But when Mars kind of goes, no, nah, hang on, I'm part of this party as well then it can take action and give it a focus and so forth. So that's the best way of doing this. Like if you felt there were reversals or there were delays, think about what action you can do to take from that, learn from that and move into the new. Okay, so let's have a look at some different gifts. Fire. This came up for somebody else. So some of you might have come to two readings definitely creative energy there and it's interesting it hasn't really shown up but it fits with the sun there's something about the sun with you actually i think that um be interesting to know you know what what sort of like aspects you have to your sun and your chart because there's something about fire and creativity and the light with you tarot okay so it may be saying you'd be very good at doing tarot and so forth and, and using that sort of energy and seeing when that kind of when there's the opportunity for the new to come in is presenting itself okay let's have a look at another deck reincarnation see this makes me feel like the once and future king there's something very strange about you guys <laughs> something very arthurian i feel look into that myth you know like it's if it resonates for you there's something about this is like almost like the second time around this is the return in some way this is a return you are returning in some way having healed so it's and you also it's almost like a smaller version of it's just happened in your life and you're healing from it but this is there's something more mythic about this with you guys and time travel finding the right timing yeah you're coming into the cycle when it's the right time wow <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> very, very interesting. Okay, let's have a look at another deck and see what else we can get. Clairvoyance, clear seeing. So you probably very much have clairvoyance. You can see what's coming and so forth. And I think that probably operates very strongly in your shamanic journey. You're probably very visual in what you do there. YouTube platform so you're meant to be seen in the world I mean whenever I see one of those platforms with this it just suggests to me you're meant to be communicating out in the world in some way and be seen for what you do so there's something about your particular magic which which would have a real presence and and be able to shine you know in some form of public or social media platform <clears throat> if you choose to do it we're going to also get a second card from the magic and mediums oracle so from the deck that that you chose the card to come to this reading to see what else that says before we just close out with some angelic support and messages for you so we have activation that came up for somebody else as well too in another of the readings this is definitely saying it's time to activate some of this energy so you really don't get stuck in the healing just let it go now you've done what you need to do it's time for that sun energy to be coming through it's time to activate who you are in some way and to have faith in what you can see that's coming through okay so let's get some angel numbers for you and then also some angelic energies watching over you to close out the reading 
So angel numbers, we have mindset and simplicity. Okay. So angel number 111, mindset, says your thoughts need refocusing. This is a reminder that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. So whatever, I just think it's, yeah, you've got a little bit stuck in something that hasn't worked, something that's been painful, something that you've had to heal from. But really, I think the angels are saying you've essentially done that. You just need to sort of take a step towards the sun and the light and so forth. And maybe what will help with that is simplicity with angel number one, two, three, four. You're being encouraged to simplify and organize your life. Release what doesn't serve you to welcome in new energy because there is new energy coming in. The next stage of whatever this myth that you're living in a way, and I don't mean myth as in it not being true. I mean in terms of sort of something bigger, larger than life. It's, it's trying to come in. So simplifying things would be helpful and having a clear mindset would be helpful. Okay. Last but not least, we'll just pull a couple of angel cards to see what other angelic energy might be around you and in what areas of life. Angel of truth. Yeah. Because you've been down in the depths and you've seen the truth and there's some new truth that's coming through. An angel of romance. Okay. So for some of you, this, this sort of almost mythic Arthurian sort of energy may be a grand romance and... and and connection you know of the divine masculine and divine feminine for others it may be just that kind of romantic thing what was the with the seven of cups your idealism that myth, mythology around it the romance of this the romance of the once and future king as i say and it doesn't have i'm not talking about gender here i'm talking about energies there's something there as well too for you so you're very interesting i do have to say it's very very strange energy but very interesting and we live in interesting times so we need people like you i think so i hope that this resonates for you i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if you care to share if you know what this is about i'd be fascinated to hear about it in the comments otherwise i hope to see you in future readings